I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be finally finishing up our perioperative nursing series. This is the third video. This one is on post-op nursing care. So post-operative is actually broken up into three different phases, one, two, three. Sometimes it is broken up into just two. This is becoming more and more commonplace today. This is something called fast tracking. So in phase one, this is when we go from the OR to the PACU, so the post anesthesia care unit. Usually you are in the PACU for about two hours. In order to get out of the PACU, we do something called the Aldright score. And I'll talk about that here when I'm all done with this, about how the patient is scored and how we determine if they're stable enough to leave the PACU. In the second phase, we're to the floor, so to like the med surge floor or to their room that they were in before. And in the third phase is the convalescent stage. So this is when they're in their med surge room to the time they go home, the time of discharge. Sometimes we don't do all three phases, sometimes we just need to do two. So right away, things we have to check. We have to assess the dermatones, so the patient's level of sensation. And this is going to depend, depending on what type of anesthesia they had. So, for example, if they had a general anesthesia, everything, for the most part, kind of wakes up at the same time, right? So they'll start being able to feel their arms and wiggle their fingers and also wiggle their toes. If they've had a regional anesthesia, that might not be the case. So with like an epidural or a spinal or something like that where we numb just part of the body, what you, the PACU nurse, are going to do is you're going to just take your hand and you go, do you feel that? Do you feel that? Do you feel that? And you're going to keep assessing every 15 minutes. And as time goes on, they should start to regain more sensation. So when they first come into the PACU from the OR and you go, do you feel that? They could say, no. But hopefully, by the time they leave the PACU, well, they have to, uh, before they leave the PACU, if you go like this, they'll go, yeah, I can feel that, right? So the loss of sensation starts to go away. They start to regain sensation as their body comes down, okay? And so hopefully, when those two hours up, they can feel their toes and wiggle their toes. Of course, we're going to do a head-to-toe assessment, frequent vital signs. Assess for nausea and vomiting because they are at high aspiration risk during this time. If they have any lines or drains, if they have a PCA, teach them how to use the PCA, and then teach them how to use an incentive spirometer. Their diet, if there's a general anesthesia, they're probably going to be NPO and then advance as tolerated like clear liquids, full liquids, then you can have regular food. A lot of people want to know this question. They want to know, when can I eat something? Because they didn't eat prior to surgery, right? Because they were in PO. And so they're like, well, when can I eat now? So um, letting them know kind of the, the timeline of their diet. If they've had like an epidural or a spinal, that kind of thing, or even like a local, they should be able to eat anytime. And then SCDs, we talked about this in the intraoperative stage, but it's also really important postoperatively too, because we want to prevent a DVT. A lot of times postoperatively, people are still kind of, you know, on bed rest, whether on purpose or not, for about 8 to 12 hours postoperatively. So they are still at that high risk for developing a blood clot in the leg, a DVT, so they definitely need to have SCDs. Now let's talk a little bit more detail about an Aldright score. Now let's talk about how to do the Aldright score. So as you can see, it's five categories here, and they are scored 0 to 2. So the highest you could get is a 10. In order to be discharged from the PACU, you should get anywhere between 8 to 10. So 8, 9, or 10, you're good to go. So let's break them down a little bit. As far as activity, you should be able to move all four extremities, so both arms, both legs. And if you can do that, you get a two. If you can only move two, usually your upper body, um, you get a one. And then if you can't move anything, you get a zero. Respiration, so you should be able to deep breathe and cough on your own. You get a two for that. You get a one if you're showing signs of distress or if you have limited breathing or shallow breathing. And then if you're apneic, obviously that's an emergency, that's really bad, but you would get a zero on this score. Circulation. So your blood pressure needs to be 20 higher than it was pre-sedation. You get a two. 
between 20 and 50, you get a 1, and then 50 and higher, you get 0. So we want your blood pressure to stabilize and be your pre-sedation, pre-anesthesia levels. So if you were normal to start off with, you should hopefully be normal by the time you leave the PACU. If your blood pressure was elevated before you started, it's probably going to be elevated after you leave the PACU. So it's probably not going to change, but that's a good thing. It should be what's normal for the patient. The consciousness, so fully awake. Awake, they're talking to you, they're asking you questions, that's really good, right? So they get a two for that. One is arousable on calling. So they kind of drift off when you're talking to them and you go, Mr. Johnson, and then they go, oh, huh, yes. So without touching them, just talking to them, calling them by name, they can wake up, they get a one. And then they don't respond at all, that's also not good, <laughs> um, that's a zero. And then finally, skin color. So a two is their normal skin color. So whatever their skin color is, it's normal for them. They get a two. One would be any variation. So pale, jaundice, dusky, ruddy, anything that's a little bit off is a one. And then of course, the worst is zero, and that's cyanotic. So that is the Aldrite score. So this is how we determine if the patient is ready to be discharged from the PACU. So how are we supposed to remember all of the things you have to do postoperatively? Well, luckily, we have a little device, and it is post-operative. So P is to prevent complications. Common complications could be blood clots, it could be pneumonia, infections, things like that. Reorientate the patient. So they're going to be kind of out of it, right? Especially if they had general anesthesia, they're not going to know what's going on. So kind of letting them know where they are, what happened, that kind of stuff get them a little bit more familiar with everything so they feel a little bit more um, comfortable and less scared. Support their emotional status. So some people when they come on it, out of anesthesia are very like happy and excited. Some people are really frightened and they don't know what's going on and the fact that they can't remember frightens them and it upsets them so they might be upset. Or they might be one of those people that was like really really nervous going into surgery and they thought you know I'm not going to make it out of this and then they wake up and they're like, oh, thank God I'm alive. <laughs> so uh, supporting whatever their emotional status is. T is for tissue perfusion, so making sure they show signs of adequate oxygenation. O is for output and intake. So if this was a general anesthetic, then they're probably not allowed anything except maybe little sips of ice chips or something like that. Um, if it wasn't, if this was like a regional or a local, they might be allowed to have something to eat or maybe some clear liquids, whatever. So um, monitoring their input and then their output. So algeria, less than 30 mLs per hour of urine, that's something we're looking for. Pain control. So adequate pain control. When people come out of general anesthesia, usually it wears off you know, pretty quickly in the PACU, and that's when they start reporting like pain at the site of incision, so pain at the site of surgery. If this was a regional, like an epidural or a spinal, those patients are a little bit luckier. It takes a little bit longer for that medication to wear off, and they usually don't really report a lot of pain. And then a local definitely wears off. It wears off pretty darn quick, so they'll probably report pain right away. Adequate temperature. So we talked in intraoperative about preventing hypothermia in the OR, right? So the big thing we're afraid of here, again, hypothermia, but also malignant hyperthermia, okay? So maintaining an adequate temperature in the PACU. Their respiratory function, airway is always number one, right? So we wanna make sure that they are breathing and they're breathing unassisted, that they're doing well. Encourage coughing and deep breathing. For most patients, I do want to say one random thing about this. If your patient has had like a surgery on their spinal cord or their brain or their eyes or their neck, certain parts of the body, we don't want them to cough and deep breathe because it can increase that um, intracranial pressure and can cause more damage than it helps. Okay, But most patients, yes, we want to encourage coughing and deep breathing after surgery. Do a thorough head-to-toe assessment, and you're going to be monitoring this patient one-on-one, -on -one, right? So if you're the post-op nurse, you're going to be in the PACU, and you're going to be with them one-on-one, -on -one, and you're going to be able to check them constantly, okay? So do a really good head-to-toe assessment. 
Infection control, right? That's one of the number one most common complications after any surgery is infection. So making sure that the site, the surgical site, is clean and dry and no signs of infection. Their vitals. So when you're in the PACU for those two hours, you are going to be doing vitals a lot. Um, at the bare minimum, you'll do every 15 minutes times two, every 30 minutes times two, hourly for two hours, um, then every four hours, we've left the PACU at this point, but then every four hours, every eight hours, if they start to become stable. So every shift at that point. But in the PACU, constantly doing vitals. And then elimination evaluation. Depending on what kind of surgery they have, they may or may not be expected to have um, a bowel movement or not. Okay, Some of them, we expect them to have a bowel movement before discharge, and then some of them, we're like, no, we understand that's not normal. So depending on what kind of surgery and what kind of anesthesia they had, we'll evaluate uh, their elimination. Some final post-operative tips I wanted to share. If this is a bariatric patient, so a, a big patient, an obese patient, they do better after surgery if they are in a reverse Trendelenburg or a sideline position. They breathe better that way. And also, this may or may not be your responsibility depending on what kind of surgery they have. It's always good to do a follow-up phone call after discharge. So if the patient is discharged same day, call them the next day, ask them how are you doing? Ask them if they understand what they're supposed to be doing, their medication regimen, their activity restrictions, all that. Because usually they forget, right? Or usually they have questions that they didn't think of the day before. So now is a good time to reinforce any appropriate teaching and answer any questions they may have. So that was my video on post-operative nursing. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.